today, one of the two winners of the semifinals, Spain or Greece, will become the first winner of our debate competition. Only two countries can participate in this final, but all students have worked a lot. So I would like to congratulate all the debaters for their effort and contribution to this experience. Now, it's my pleasure to announce the members of the Greek team. Alexandros Morales, <coughs> Michalis Anastasopoulos, and Yanis Muratis on my right. They will be the A team, and they will have to defend the well-known resolution, the world we better off without genetically modified food. On my left, debaters from Spain, Clara Pena, Santiago Andújar, and Sara Garcia will be the end team, and they will have to disapprove of the mentioned resolution. Needless to say, we are eager to know the final result of this competition. Good luck, and thank you for your enthusiastic participation. Now it's turn and time to the A team. Good morning, Mrs. Chairperson, Honorable Judges, members of the opposition and members of the proposition. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this debate as the first speaker. I am Alexandros Maroulis and today we are going to, to discuss genetically modified food. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe that the world would be better off without genetically modified food. Around the world, communities are fighting genetically engineered food. Are they safe? How do they impact the environment? Can they improve food security? Is the world better off with or without genetically engineered food? This is a very hot debate and not just in farming circles. We are talking about food so people have the right to know the truth about what they eat. However, in reality, we do not know it but, but we've been eating it for a long time and no one has told us. Genetically modified food is in a store near us today. In fact, it's been there for years. Do you have any idea how much of what we eat each day has been made from genetically modified organisms? Uh, before I proceed with my arguments, I would, like, I would like to begin with defining genetically modified food. For those of you who do not know, uh, GMO foods are created by modifying the DNA, uh, uh, by modifying the DNA of one organism through the introduction of genes from another. They are developed for a number of different reasons, to fight disease, enhance flavor, flavor uh, resist pests, improve nutrition, survive drought, and in uh, our food, uh, and are mainly found uh, in our food supply in processed foods using corn, soybeans, and cotton, uh, and as feed for farm animals. This modern technology seems absolutely compelling and promising. On the other hand, the global resistance against genetically modified crops uh, is growing at an amazing rate. There is a long list of nations which completely ban or have severe restrictions on GMOs. These countries will not allow genetically modified crops to be grown in them. They are also requesting uh, that biotechnology companies exclude their territories from uh, GMO seed sales. So, why are these countries doing this? Most concerns about genetically modified food fall into one of three categories. Environmental hazards, economic concerns, and human health risks. I. As the first speaker, I uh, will outline the environmental hazards of GMOs. Uh, our second speaker will uh, elaborate argumentation on the economic concerns and the fact that GMO foods is dangerous for our health. And our third speaker will contend that the dangers of GMO foods are too high to vote anything else but against them. First of all, the genetic engineers <coughs> claim that uh, GM uh, crops have reduced pesticides use, uh, have preserved our soils and offered many environmental benefits. Now, we are going to hear different perspectives on this technology. Most GMO crops uh, today have been made to resist insects and herbicides as well as crop damage. Uh, however, scientists describe a huge uh, increase in herbicides use that has started uh, about a decade ago and has gotten worse and worse each year. In 1996, scientist at Monsanto uh, has put a new gene into corn, soybeans and cotton that makes it possible to spray and kill all uh, weeds but not their corn. As a result, we have a spread of resistant weeds. 
And the same happens with insects that can also become resistant to gene crops. So, we all fear that we are creating super strong bad super weeds or plant species um, that get immune to pesticides and therefore require more and more of them and we are running out of genes to fight them. Secondly, according to the World Health Organization, there is a very real risk of outcrossing. Uh, by saying outcrossing, I refer to the transfer of engineered genes from genetically modified crops to conventional plants or, or to related crop species in the wild. Uh, these may happen by means of wind, uh, insect pollination, or other transfer. Uh, these could radically alter entire ecosystem. Outcrossing can also have an indirect effect on food safety and security, uh, as the contaminated species make their way into the food chain. Finally, we shouldn't forget the harm caused to non-target <coughs> organisms. Uh, in 1999, Laboratory study has proven a huge reduction in monarch butterfly caterpillars. Uh, they consume genetically modified pollen and berries. So, ladies and gentlemen, for all these reasons, we are absolutely sure that GMO food had enormous environmental hazards. Therefore, they should be banned. Thank you. have always created doubts in consumers during all history. Please think about the example of smartphones and their dangerous microwaves, something that has been never proved. So our question is, would that be the reason why uh, we are afraid of genetically modified food? Uh, I understood uh, perfectly what you said. But I would uh, like to answer uh, your question indirectly. First of all, I would uh, like to remind you that uh, we have responsibility to feed the world, uh, to increase uh, the yields, but without GM crops, by improving conventional breeding, uh, because I believe that the consumption uh, of GMO foods uh, are not 100% uh, safe for health, animal and human health. Uh, our second speaker will uh, refer uh, on health problems uh, with GMO for cause. This is the main target. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, boys, girls, jury. As the first speaker of the narrative team, uh, we are against... Uh, well, first of all, I would like to say that we um, agree with the concepts defined by the uh, affirmative team. And secondly, I would like to introduce what we're going to talk to you about. First, I'm going to treat the environmental and uh, health issues about uh, GMOs. Secondly, my partner is going to talk to you about uh, society and economy and transgenics. And lastly, my friend is going to conclude our um, uh, position. Well, first of all, you talk about um, you talk about the safety of of GMOs. Well, for that, I'd like to mention a um, uh, study uh, made by the journal of uh, by the magazine Journal of Animal Science, uh, which has uh, made the biggest track uh, ever done in animals uh, from cattle during three decades. They were over 1,000 million animals, and uh, uh, fed. Uh, they were over 1,000 million animals. Uh, studied between the period of time between uh, 1983, where the, when the GMOs didn't exist, until 2011, when uh, GMOs were basically the fruit. Um, you, you know what was the result? Well, um, it hasn't supposed any consequences to their health or productivity, neither for the consumers. Uh, secondly, you talk about the resistance in plaques and pests. Well, I will tell you one thing. This happens with every kind of constant treatments with antibiotic or traditional herbicides uh, because of, of something that has conditioned the evolution of the species since life appeared on Earth, and it's called natural selection, concept developed by Charles Darwin. Um, so when uh, these uh, weeds and, and pests uh, develop resistance to, to this 
uh, BT Procs, it's like a bird that develops uh, wings so it can fly. Um, secondly, you mentioned the cross pollination and the genetic uh, contamination. Um, and I'd like to tell you one thing. Many precautions can be taken against uh, this contamination. For example, I'm basing on a study developed by our regional government of Spain, of Spain uh, which says that if you establish a minimum distance of 30 meters between cross and an interval of at least 11 days, uh, there shouldn't be any contamination. And also, there are buffer zones isolate, which isolate uh, uh, GM uh, crops from traditional crops so that there is no contamination. Um, uh, then, you talked about uh, that they could contaminate their natural equivalents. Well, here I'd like to mention the substantial equivalence pr uh, principle, which is supported by the biggest world authorities about food, which are the FAO and the World Health Organization. To explain, to explain this principle, I will quote it. DNA of every living organism is structurally similar. For this reason, the presence of transfer DNA in the food themselves doesn't cause any impact on consumers' health since the DNA is the same. So genetically modified food must be considered as safe as conventional ones if these have, if these have the same composition characteristics. So if a GM plant is equivalent to its modified if, or to is equivalent to its natural uh, version one, both of them should be regulated the same way. Uh, then I'd like to talk to you about some advances that uh, GMOs can suppose to our society. For example, the creation of the, well, which are called now the uh, second generation GMOs. Uh, these uh, GMOs are used to improve our health. They can contain vaccines against several illnesses, and then from them, uh, edible vaccines can be made, which are easier to introduce in, de in developing countries which can afford to um, obtain good meds. Uh, for example, I will tell you another example of um, of vaccines that can be created uh, by genetically modified by genetic engineering. Um, one exa uh, example is the insertion of human DNA in in tobacco plants in order to obtain vaccines against illnesses such as flu, called Hopkins lymphoma, or obtain a human virgin collagen. Uh, this investigation has been carried by Odeid Sosio from the Agriculture Faculty of the Hebrew uh, University of Jerusalem. Also, I will tell you about some um, more nourishing foods that could be really interesting for our society, which are not corrupted by companies like you mentioned, Monsanto or Syngenta. Um, there is, for example, the flower tomato uh, with frozen or with frozen, which is really high in antioxidants. And when actually into while testing rats, uh, their lives lasted a 40% more. It's um, possible that these tomatoes are uh, available in our markets in four or five years. And also, also I will tell you about the um, more capability uh, of thriving with poor soils and or the or adverse climates. Uh, that uh, have this uh, the gym crops. Um, there are ser several researchers focusing on creating crops resistant to drought, low temperatures, or that could grow in lands which were a traditional crop would be impossible. Uh, this would reduce our dependence on water and fertilizers, and it would be possible to obtain food in every part of the world. So everyone could plant uh, food regardless of where they are. Another way to uh, one way of uh, alleviating the lack of food in many parts of the world, such as the North Pole, where uh, no plant can be planted. To end my my intervention, I would like to quote. We have a genetic expert, Jose Hugo-Tran, um, from, from Spain. Uh, he is, uh, he supports... Um, Sorry, but it's time. <laughs> Can I read it? This is one point. Uh, thinking that things are stable because someone put them there for our benefit and they cannot be touched is an obsolete, unscientific and nonsense vision of our world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I have a question about your speech. I listened carefully to your speech and I saw that you mentioned a study to support your points about the health effects of the GMOs. But there are many and many studies that indicate the exact opposite. So which side should the consumer support and why? Sure. 
can have been many studies that, opposite the, that indicate the exact opposite of what you support. Which side should the consumer support and why? Which side should oh. the consumer support and why? This is, um, okay, GMOs are in a very uh, strange position right now because, you know, GMOs are actually a very, could be a very good advance for um, ourselves. I mentioned uh, studies uh, developed by independent uh, scientifics and not by companies. Like uh, all of the studies that you mentioned have been probably made over products uh, developed by uh, companies such as Monsanto or Syngenta, which are corrupted, which don't uh, develop these products properly, which don't take the um, proper uh, preventive measures. Uh, which don't care at all about our health, about the environment, about the consequences that they can have from consumers. They are corrupted by money. They only care about uh, their uh, economical profits. So the examples you mentioned, it's true. They are massive. Like um, most of the GMOs industry is corrupted. But uh, GMOs themselves uh, could be reused very properly if you take the, the right uh, uh, preventive measures, like I said. So uh, I like I answer your question like that. We should support um, the good, the sustainable and honest production of GMOs. That's the position that consumers should have. All right. Thank thanks you so for much. your answer. Good morning, my name is Michal Sansasopoulos and I'm really glad to participate in the final debate here in the beautiful town of Vigo. I do think it's time for a discussion about biotechnology in food production. To be honest, I was listening very carefully to the arguments of the negative and I ask you ladies and gentlemen to think the reality, not the promises or even more the aspirations. We believe that we are opening a Pandora's box with unknown consequences with GM technology. Before I come to my own arguments, I would like to take issue with what the previous speaker just said. Let's have a look at some facts. Raising GM crops is an uncontrolled experiment with unknown consequences for the surrounding ecosystems. Researchers predict the evolution of superweeds that will become immune into a wide spectrum with killer. Naysayers also worry that viruses will snatch the resistant traits from GM crops. These genetic viruses might be evolved into a new entire strain that will affect previously unaffected plants. GMOs curse pollinate and seeds can travel. If this happens, it is really difficult to, uh, to overcome this uh, bad situation. We don't think it is wise to ignore the deformation hazards especially when they are absolutely connected with economical profit for few. GMOs are increasing the economical profits of farmers and biotech companies at the expense of the environment. GM seed firms invest heavily in research and development and naturally they want to get back their investment. Patenting GM uh, genetically other crops is the means they use, but patenting proves too expensive for poor farmers. Hence, the gap between the rich and the poor is more and more widening. GMO contamination has also caused plenty of economical losses to organic and non-GM farmers who often struggle to keep their seeds pure and at the same time they have to cope with the lawsuits by these firms. At this point, I would also like to describe the health risks posed by GM food. Over the past few years, a number of countries have completely banned or put some restrictions on GM technology. The latest country is Russia, after top government scientists recommended at least 10 years ban. It should also be noted that in an experiment in Scotland, some rats fed with GM potatoes suffering from internal organ damage. These genetically modified crops may unintentionally introduce a new allergen. This new allergen may be introduced from unrelated species. For instance, a fish gene can be put into a plant. Some critics argue that the possibilities for this are greater than with the traditionally bred crops. In 2009, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine connected GM food 
with plenty of health problems. Many of them, such as infertility, accelerated aging, and major changes in our organs. At the same time, the defenders speak about safety and documentation, maybe for now. But what about the long-term effects? The data they recall are based on animals which are fed exclusively with GM food. But these animals are killed at a very young age, so they do not live their full lifetime and the results don't tell us much. To sum up, the truth is that we don't know enough about GM food to consider it safe for the humanity. There is no possible way that our health authorities can test all the possible combinations in a large enough population to be able to say with confidence that it's harmless. At this point, I would also like to, to say that some scientific studies so clearly, thank you, for that GMOs shouldn't be consumed and more are emerging every year. I think I have demonstrated environmental, economic and health hazards. For all these reasons, I ask you to think on the reality of what have, has actually the GM food brought about. So I urge you to stand against it. Thank you for your attention. example of countries such as poor countries such as Zimbabwe or Kenya in Africa uh, which don't accept uh, GMOs in the effort um, that uh, developed countries offer to them so that they can alleviate hunger in their territories. Don't you think that they should uh, leave their um, free judgment apart and accept those uh, GM foods which are um, safety, which are uh, well preferred and created um, so that they can combat properly in their churches. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for giving me the chance to make it clear that uh, it is, a pos it is uh, our chance to... There oh, sorry, sorry. There is no... Uh, you could easily feed Africa and Asia uh, and all the third world nations with the simple food. There is no, there is no. Um, we sh we shouldn't. Uh, we shouldn't uh, keep in our mind that we should. Uh, feed them only with GM food. We have plenty of simple food and we shouldn't forget that we are throwing and half of our food supplies are thrown at the garbage. So we could give them this food, natural food, not genetically engineered food. Thank you for your question. Firstly, I would like to review your answer because, yes, uh, we have plenty of food, but uh, they don't have enough food, so if the, uh, um, as we have plenty of food, they don't have plenty of food, so uh, how could they plant normal, because just um, they don't have, so one of these one, the, uh, one solution could be that uh, transgenic uh, are capable to be planted in extreme conditions like, for example, um, dry, dry cultures. So with this, um, transgenic could, could be a solution for world hunger in countries like 
Uh, as you said, uh, Zimbabwe, Namibia, or uh, undeveloped, undeveloped countries um, from Asia, or that. Examples like these are the Protato Potato, which has 60% uh, uh, more than the normal, normal one of, bit of protein. Uh, and the, the Indian scientist who made it said, it's not about incorporating the potato resistant to pesticides or micro microbicidal agents. We want to ensure that the insertion of the genetically modified crops will not have harmful results. And the needs in developing, developing countries are very different from that, the one in rich countries. Another case is the golden rice, with, which has 40% uh, more of vitamin A uh, than the normal one, which is uh, free to, uh, to plant if you order it to the FAO. Also, uh, I would like to say that in the European Union, uh, we have a law that um, that um, that indicates indicates on the uh, envelope of the uh, of the um, products that um, if the product has a 0.9 percent more than in a 0.9 percent more no more no. Uh, a 0 0.9 of modified uh, uh, components, uh, it has to say uh, contains transgenics. So if you don't like uh, trans uh, transgenics or if you don't want to consume it, don't do it. Also, uh, uh, transgenic, uh, transgenics are um, have a, a lot of advantages uh, upon the normal ones because as many farmers said by experience uh, that they are profitable and easier and less laborious to, to plant than the normal ones. Uh, also they report uh, a half, the 50% more than the normal one in profits. As uh, Jose Luis Romero, the president of the Bio Pro Biotechnology Association in Spain, said that, um, that genetically modified crops will not have to use we, we, we will not have to use pesticides because uh, the transgenic fight itself will prevent the pest commonly known as drill to finish the to finish with the whole harvest. Also I would like to quote uh, the FAO and the World Health Organization, uh, which are the uh, most important organizations in the world related to health and alimentation. Uh, the FAO says, up to date, the countries in which transgenic crops have been introduced have not seen considerable damages for health or, um, or environment. And the World Health Organization says, uh, the genetically modified organisms currently available at the market have passed the controls and it's not probable that they present risks for human health. <coughs> so, uh, I... Um, as these uh, organizations are the, uh, the most important in the world, uh, why shouldn't people uh, rely on them more than uh, other ones that are, that are smaller? Many people support uh, that the problem is the access to food and not the lack of food. Uh, what do you believe is right and why? Uh, yeah. Many people support that the problem is the access to food and not the lack of food. Uh, what do you believe is right and why? Uh, but in which context? context? Um, if there's a lack of food, where? Or... Many people support that the problem is the access to food and not the lack of food. What uh, do you believe is right and why? Well, uh, as we said before, for example, in, 
in undeveloped countries, uh, it's they don't and they have lack of food and they mm, don't have an access access to food because they just can't get the food. You you can feed anyone without food because they can plant it because they don't have the seeds. So um, a solution for this problem could be the uh, transgenic seeds which can be planted in 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 any kind of 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 cultivar. So if I answer it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for the last time for today's proposition. It is now my pleasure to summarize this debate and take a look at what both sides have said and see what the outcome of this debate actually is. Our arguments consist of three main structures, environmental, public health and economic concerns. We have been told by the opposition that genetically modified food is an innovation, something revolutionary that will save the world from traditional agriculture and farming. Uh, imagine new food with more nutrients and vitamins. But all this just makes me wonder, since genetically modified food has been on the market for over 20 years, why has nothing of the before mentioned actually happened? Allow me to explain you why. Where they are grown, genetically modified food are, they occupy large areas and are linked to intensive monoculture systems that wipe out every other ecosystem and organism. Most of them are engineered to resist chemical pesticides, or supposed to make their own, which are both harmful to the environment. At the same time, big companies such as Monsanto and Bayer control the entire GM food chain. The same companies, but uh, which at the same time are the biggest producers of fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides in the world. So now I would like to take issue on something the affirmative, uh, the negative team said. If Monsanto and Bayer are the biggest producers of GM seeds in the world, why would they actually corrupt, have corrupt studies that are against them? That doesn't actually make sense, use your logic. They would have uh, researches that support them, not negate them. Uh, every new farmers have to get to them every new season and pay large amounts of money for the seeds. They are also forbidden to try and improve the variety without paying expensive royalties. Additionally, the negatives claim that GM food is safe to consume, but actually so little is understood about the health effects of GMOs. At many parts of the world, including the EU, many of the studies on these products are founded by the same companies that produce them, causing, causing doubt on the objectivity and quality of the data. We prefer to take the fact seriously that over 38 countries worldwide have completely banned the cultivation of GM food. Finally, the negative team claims that the GMOs will save the world from hunger, but in, but in, but in actuality, since they began to be marketed over two decades ago, the number of starving people in the world has in fact risen, just like the, the profits of the companies who produce them. In countries like Argentina and Brazil, GM soy has swept away food crops, such as potatoes, corn and wheat, in order to provide alternative, pro alternative crops for profit. In fact, most of these are not even supposed to be consumed by humans, but rather to be used as biofuels or animal feed. They have not fed the world but rather concentrated even more money and power in the hands of the few ruthless companies. They put at risk our right to choose what to cultivate and how. It is time to stop the big scam. I would also like to remind you that it is quite normal nowadays to listen about the side effects or the negatives of a new scientific innovation after maybe some years of use when the profits have been reduced. In the May 2014 issue of National Geographic, there was an amazing article that presented a plan on how to feed over 9 billion people on an earth with shrinking resources. The writer, an academic from the University of Minnesota, has five solutions and GMOs is not one of them. I will read them exactly as he states them. 1. Stop deforestation. 2. Grow more on the land we've got. 3. Use resources more efficiently. 4. Shift diets and five, reduce waste. It cannot be denied that genetically modified food is neither essential nor important to addressing the major challenges ahead of us. Fortunately, we've got other far more powerful technologies. They are called traditional breeding and agroeconomy. We don't want to ban genetic engineering, but we want to move it to the side of this debate. You can start the, pro you can start the process right here, right now, by standing against GM food. Thank you very much for your attention.
speaker of the team N, I would like to emphasize in several points to show our position in favor of transgenics. Uh, first of all, none of the transgenics that are now available in the market is risky for human consumption, according to the World Health Organization and FAO. So multinationals try to monopolize, monopolize the world's alimentation. But here, the problem is not transgenics themselves, but the way they are controlled by these companies. In second place, uh, nobody should be affected by transgenics or has to eat them if they don't want to because it is possible to take security measures like establishing safe distances between the GM and non-GM crops. This makes possible the coexistence of both kinds of crops. And also the European Union's precautionary principle that was mentioned before by my team. In third place, um, GM food have a lot of very good benefits for human health. For example, molecular farming. This consists in the use of plants for the production of therapeutic or pharmacological compounds as antibodies, vaccines, hormones, or human proteins. We've already obtained a lot of these compounds by using uh, mod genetically modified corn, lettuce, rye, or tobacco. Another big advance for the future is the creation of edible vaccines with genetically modified food. For example, the biotechnology INTAE Institute created a potato which works against the Newcastle illness. This is a virus that affects birds and can cause very gravely consequences in the economy. In fourth place, um, another fact that I want to focus on is that genetically modified food can eradicate the world hunger. The problem is the bad idea that we have about this kind of food. When we hear the word transgenic, we think about chickens without beak or huge potatoes or monsters of laboratory. But this is totally wrong. And I'm sure that actually all of you have consumed transgenics several times in your life. Some countries, like Zimbabwe or Kenya, didn't accept the food offered by other countries because they were genetically modified. The world seems to be very, very confused about transgenics. And the problem is that who really lose in these confusions are those people who need our help urgently. In this place, I would like to quote uh, Werner Arbel, Nobel Prize of 1978, who said that it is appropriate to produce GM food to feed the population. And he also says that without genetical changes, the evolution couldn't be possible. Um, now I want to ask you, do you really think that the world would be better going back in time without genetically modified food? Please, realize that we have only been using this kind of technology for 20 years. And even though some mistakes have been made, white choices and advantages lead them a lot. There are also a big promise for the future. More medicines, like I've said before, more health and better food. And more if we think about what FAO says. By 2015, harvests will be reduced in a 12% and the world will be overpopulated. And last but not the least, the 80% of the soy grown up in the United States of America is transgenic, and inhabitants don't show any damages in their health. So, summing up of what my team has said, it's totally annihilated their resolution, and it is confirmed that the world is better with the progress, advance, and technology in favor of transgenics. Thank you very much. Once again, let me congratulate who's participating in, in this uh, really exquisite debate. And I must tell you that I, I uh, have learned new things about 
about argumentation. I, and I think this is a very good point of this debate that we have seen and we have heard uh, the but similar evidence and similar arguments as in the first two rounds, but restructured. And I think we can see how uh, you have evolved in teamwork and how you have restructured your evidence. And so we have seen a very, very good example of how you have to argue and how you have to use your knowledge in the practice. And. Uh, well, on the part of the organizing uh, teachers, I have to draw the conclusion that we must uh, think about how to use sources, for example, and uh, how to um, yes, and how to reinforce the the roles of the debate, and and um, this is also a very. Uh, very important point that we will have to review later and uh, so once again I have to say that uh, both sides are really good and uh, I would like to announce that the winner of the final of the debate uh, is Greece so. <laughs> Thank you very much for your effort.